paint. And the two high-level bullet points are really what I call bugs for people and bugs for machines. So what are bugs for people? What do I mean by that? These are bugs that really uh, uh, have to do with the functionality or the logic of the particular software you're developing. They are not uh, types of issues that you could expect a machine to ever figure out automatically or observe bad behavior automatically. Uh, for example, if it, the design of your software calls for a, a button to be blue and instead it's red in your implementation, well, that's probably a bug. The person that designed the button to be blue will take a look at that and say, it's wrong. That button should be red. Um, and so that's a bug in the code. But that's a bug that only somebody in your QA lab is going to be able to find, um, or, or a customer, because it requires a human understanding of what the, the software is supposed to do. And similarly, uh, interface issues, and, and whether an interface is usable or not, these are the issues that uh, only people can really determine in interacting with the software. So that's the bugs for people camp. The bugs for machines, I would say, primarily are coding mistakes. They are when you have a, an implementation in mind and uh, the, the mistakes that you make in implementing that in code are manifest as, as problems. You know, those are the ones that are causing your system to crash from time to time, most likely, or cause data corruption, or cause the machine to lock up, um, maybe because there's a deadlock or something in a concurrency type of programming methodology. And so these are the types of problems that, um, that the tools can really help you with, dynamic or static alike. And uh, another point about the, the difference between the bugs for people and bugs for machines is you probably have a, a pretty good sense as to the breakout of the different bugs in the software that you're developing, whether they fall into the bugs for people category or the bugs for machines. Oftentimes, for example, if, if you have you know, expert coders who are all stars and very rarely make mistakes, um, you probably will have less bugs that machines can find. And similarly, if you don't necessarily have a good process for taking your design requirements and, and making sure that the implementation matches those design requirements, um, and the, and, or maybe you've designed your algorithms in a poor way so they don't scale very well and you have algorithmic issues, well, those are the kinds of things that you're going to need people to solve. You're going to need people to observe the fact that this code is running too slowly or it doesn't match the spec in some way. And so every, every software development organization is different, and the problems that you face are different, and the mix that you uh, face in, the, in, in that is, is also different. One more point on the bugs for machines, and, and this really plays into the dynamic versus static uh, aspect of, of the tool that we'll talk about. It's another way you split up the code uh, or the bugs is bugs that will hurt right now versus bugs that will hurt later. And that really gets to the crux of the difference between dynamic tools and static tools. Bugs that hurt right now are the things that you're observing. And this, again, goes back to the definitions that we were talking about. They are the things that you run the program and it breaks. And you can see that. And it's causing pain right now because either the QA guy is, is yelling at you or a customer is yelling at you, and you need to fix that. Uh, the other category, bugs that will hurt later, are things that uh, you know are incorrect about the code, and you're not feeling pain right now because no one is necessarily observing that bad runtime behavior, but you, you can anticipate uh, that being a problem as, as time moves on and as the code is exercised in different ways or as you need to add functionality to the code uh, to, to improve its, its feature set or whatnot. And so that's the real, you know, in thinking about the bugs that machines can find, it really kind of splits into the bugs that are hurting right now and the bugs that will hurt later. And that should guide kind of which technology you use to implement uh, implement in your in your development process. So going on to the next slide, how do these bug sprays work? How do these tools work? They're all looking for bugs. And they're looking for bugs that machines can find. And the high level bullet is that both types of tools, dynamic or static, really are trying to uh, pull the symptoms of the bugs back into their root cause. 
And the, the difference between dynamic and static would be that a dynamic tool, it does its dirty work, if you will, at runtime. So it is going to be instrumenting the code, instrumenting the executable uh, file at the, at the binary level in some way to watch what's happening as you run the program. So to, to state that another way, it, when you see a, a bad symptom when you're running the code, what a dynamic tool does is it instruments that executable so that it can pull you to the root cause in the binary as to exactly what went wrong and where. And just to give you a, a quick example, I, I was mentioning a memory leak before. Well, um, one thing that a dynamic tool will many dynamic tools will do, is it will instrument the calls to malloc and free. If you're in the C, C land, those are the, the memory allocation functions and freeing functions uh, for doing dynamic memory allocation. With this instrumentation at runtime, what happens is uh, when you run the code and you see a call to malloc, then the dynamic tool will note that call off somewhere. It will see the pointer that is returned. It will see how much memory that is uh, allocated. It will sometimes it may may create a, a little bit of memory before or after as to keep track of the balance to make sure you didn't write over it. But it will keep this list. And and then when the program finishes execution, it will cross reference that list based on everything that was freed, all the pointers that were freed. And because it's instrumented the mallet call and has instrumented the free call. Well, uh, then it can it can keep track of that and, and essentially issue a report to you at the end of the execution saying, on this particular execution of the program, I noticed all of these allocations. And for a certain subset of those, I didn't see any corresponding freaks. And because it has instrumented the malloc and the free, it's able to tell you essentially where all the leaks were in, in that particular execution of the program. But it's all happening as the program runs. That's why we call it runtime. The static tools uh, do their dirty work, if you will, at compile time. And the difference between compile time and runtime, of course, is that compile time is happening um, essentially when you compile the code before you run it. It does not require that you run the code to look for problems in the code. So the static tools comb through the source code itself, not the, the binaries. They comb through the source code itself looking for the flaws. And they're not looking through the resulting executable that, that's built together um, and then, of course, run. Like I mentioned, um, the, the tools are trying to take the eventual runtime symptoms and map them back into the root cause. In the dynamic tools, that they'll be able to tell you somewhat in the particular execution environment, these are the parts of the binary that I noticed were, were causing problems. Like, and, and oftentimes, if you're running in you know, a debug executable, you'll be able to map that, in some sense, back to the source code. Um, but since they are observing what's happening at runtime, they won't necessarily give you the whole picture of the source code. They'll just give you that one slice. The static tools are analyzing the whole source code. And so they're going to pinpoint problems at the source code level, not the binary level. Um, and, and so to give you a little bit of insight into, for example, how a resource leak might be discovered with a static tool, um, rather than watching what happens at runtime, a static tool is going to key off of the function calls as it's analyzing the source code. And it's going to, when it sees, for example, a malloc in the source code, it's going to know that the resulting assignment to a variable should be kept track of. And what it will do is it will attempt or pretend that it's executing all the different paths from that point and look for places where that pointer is not captured or freed and then goes out of scope. And so to a static tool, the memory leak occurs when that pointer goes out of scope and is, no one is tracking it anymore. And it can highlight all of those things for you. It can tell you exactly where the malloc is. It can tell you the, the branches that would have to be true or false to get to uh, that particular leak. And then it can show you where that pointer went out of scope. And that's a little bit different than what the dynamic tool will tell you. The dynamic tool will, will give you an execution slice um, and tell you where you allocated the memory. But it won't necessarily tell you where the variable went out of scope, because it's not a symbolic type of